call to order this meeting of the Three Rivers Local School District Board of Education meeting. Today is September 14th, 2021. Uh, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mrs. Snyder. Mrs. Miller. Here. Dr. Stafford. Mr. Evans. Here. Mr. McDonald. Here. All right, we have the approval and dispense with reading of the minutes for the August 10th, 2021 and the August 24th, 2021 regular meetings. I make a motion that we approve and dispense with the reading of the minutes. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Miller. Yes. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. All right, that takes us to our committee reports. Uh, we will start with the academic and curriculum uh, meeting with myself. Uh, we had our meeting on the 9th of this month. Uh, Joan Stidham, Megan Rivett, and myself met. Uh, we did have a community parent come, uh, Michelle Richards. We had a, a great discussion about uh, student testing data um, as we expected. We had a, a pretty big fall off in uh, proficiency scores uh, compared to two years ago prior to COVID. Um, there were a few bright spots. There were some areas that actually improved by a point or two. So it's, it's nice that it wasn't a complete loss. But um, it's, this, we, we were gonna look at the uh, state averages as well to see how much the state averages went down to, to compare how much we went down to relative to other districts, and that was something we wanted to look at. There was some new forecasting. Um, that it was similar to Alice, uh, the, the, the uh, Forecast 5 that you have for the financial software. The yes, we now have uh, that same company helping us out with our uh, testing data. So we are able to search and manipulate that data and use it in a way similar to what you do, which is really fantastic. Um, that company does an amazing job uh, drilling down on information. Hi, sorry to interrupt. interrupt. Yeah. And we're just looking for the Washington DC trip meeting for the eighth graders. It's an in-person 6 p.m. auditorium oh. on today. On today's date. And then she can Could it be not in the elementary? There's no man there at start. No. I'm calling sorry, do you agree with me? So the lab actually refer, um, reviews the testing data. And we purchased it. So I'll, I'll finish up the uh, committee uh, report while we're uh, helping them. Uh, we, we also uh, talked about virtual school update uh, we registered for an IRN number, which is required with the state in order to um, host virtual school. We did it for K through 12 in case the need arise, arises sometime later in the school year. Uh, we don't intend to do that, but we have the ability to do it if we need to. Uh, we got an equal opportunities for every child grant. Um, that money is divided between uh, the districts in Ohio. It's used uh, for new AP courses, a uh, new AP course and Rise Up curriculum uh, last year. So we talked a little bit about that. Uh, we talked about the uh, PD plan for the 2021-2022 school year. We also talked about the social emotional learning standards, uh, what, were, what our focus is at the school. Um, I know that there was some concern from some parents that was expressed that it, it wouldn't include um, CRT or other things in it. Um, we, we were able to uh, provide information on that, that we, we didn't have that in our SEL standards. Um, we also uh, provided an email to the district. Uh, I know the middle school email went out. It provided a link to the actual um, curriculum 
uh, for SEL in the district, which I think is really helpful. So any parents who want to view what it is that's being taught can go out and look at it. And, and, and personally, I as a parent uh, thought it was really interesting material and, and very helpful. And then we set our next meeting date for October 11th, 2021 at 11 a.m. at C.T. Young in Joan's office again. So that's all for that. Um, board policies is next with uh, Mrs. Miller and Dr. O. Uh, Nothing for this one? Okay. Uh, building and grounds, uh, Mr. Evans. Um, as you guys know, we had our special meeting last Tuesday uh, that we toured we toured CT Young and this facility, uh, the main school track. Uh, we have a follow-up meeting on October 12th. I'm going to post the regular meeting that we're going to do our uh, tour of the athletic facilities, include the rest of the building, the stadium, uh, the bus garage, and the transportation center. And the focus of these uh, uh, tours, if you will, is to discuss how we're coping with and uh, making the most of the little bit of space that we have, or vacancy that we have, if you will, uh, lack thereof. Um, probably the biggest thing in buildings and grounds, and I'll let Dr. Alf go into more detail, will be our uh, need to interview and hire a new facilities director. So uh, that's probably first and foremost on our list. I feel like after we get that person on board, it'll be time to set up a committee and start to have some separate meetings. So um, I'll start to, I'll make the public acknowledgement now if anyone's interested in being on, a, serving on the facilities, buildings and grounds committee, uh, reach out to me and let me know. And, We'll probably start those meetings, I would guess, here towards the end of the year. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, Just Dr. add, I appreciate the board's time last Tuesday when we did the tour. We spent several hours, both, as Mr. Evans said, CT Young and Track, and I think we learned a lot just about in terms of how we're utilizing our space and the fact um, that we're, from a program standpoint, we're kind of tapped out on this campus. So I think it's wise for us to take a look at what we have, what we can do, and where we'll be five years from now. So appreciate um, everybody's time that evening and uh, look forward to a follow-up where we'll look at the wrestling building and some of our athletic uh, facilities, bus garage and maintenance garage on the 12th. And then uh, as Mr. Evans alluded to, we're in the process of taking applications for our supervisor of facilities and maintenance and uh, hopefully we'll have a recommendation uh, on September 28th at the next board meeting. I know one of the takeaways that I had from the tour was the fact that every square foot of space that could be utilized is being utilized. Um, and we have classrooms going on in places that were designed to be closets. And I was very impressed with the, the staff who made those closets, luxury closets for, for classrooms. They, they really did what they could do with them. It was very impressive. Um, they looked very nice and inviting and warm for, for the students that would be using them with them. So um, I, I think we all appreciate how much effort has gone into making the best of a sometimes difficult situation that we, we have. So I really appreciate that. Any other thoughts about? I thought they did a great job. Uh, yeah, and I was very impressed with all of it. All right, uh, I guess we'll skip finance uh, since Mr. Snyder's not here. So that would take us to our superintendent's report with Dr. O. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I'd like to block items A through L. Under personnel, item A is recommend the following personnel items to be approved. The individuals listed below under item A to serve as substitute bus aides to support students in special, with special needs for the 21-22 school year, a maximum of 15 hours each at their hourly rate. Item B is the recommendation for a non-athletic supplemental contract for Andrea Perry is Taylor High School Junior Class Advisor with a 21-22 school year at 5%. Item C, recommend Ms. Misty Bolin as a substitute cook with a 21-22 school year pending background checks. 
Item D is the non-teaching contract for Lori Wabnitz Stout as kitchen manager, effective September 15th, 2021 through June 30th, 2022 at $20.71 per hour, which is step 10. Under instructional item E is a recommendation to approve the gifted identification and service plan for the 21-22 school year that was included in your board packet. Item F under operational is to recommend the following bus drivers are guaranteed hours for the 21-22 school year as listed below. Item G is approval of our bus routes and bus stops for the 21-22 school year. Item H is authorize the transportation directors to adjust the bus routes, bus stops, and student pick up and drop off times as needed for the 21-22 school year. Item I, uh, approve the list that's in your packet in lieu of transportation for students um, who will not use our uh, our transportation system uh, for the 21-22 school year. Under athletics, item J, rescind the athletic supplemental contract for Gary Beerman as assistant football coach for personal reasons for the 21-22 school year. Item K, uh, recommend the approval of athletic supplemental contracts for the following individuals for the 21-22 school year, pending background checks and proper certification rate of pay is subject to change upon negotiated collective bargaining agreement. And that's Zach Fischesser, junior high wrestling coach at 4%, and Tracy Weehy, a girls basketball volunteer coach. And then item L, recommend Robin Booth as a ticket taker slash scanner for the 21-22 school year at $30 per game, paid through the athletic budget. Are there any questions on items A through L? Um, item F, Dr. Alt, the uh, bus drivers, are they, is this like guaranteed hours per day, like, uh, like a typical school day? That, yes. Okay, no. I just wanted to clarify. It, okay. We've had in the past difficulty finding drivers um, where we're only guaranteed four hours. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, we, upon employment, we agree that we'll give them six hours of work. And that's a, a typical school day during Correct. the school year? Yeah, right. that okay. usually covers our routes that we need. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Move roll call, please. Motion. Oh, we need a uh, motion. I'll move that we approve items A through L as presented by Dr. All. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mrs. Miller. Yes. All right, that takes us to the treasurer's report with uh, Mrs. Gundler. Yes, thank you, Mr. McDonald. Um, I did wanna share with you that I spent most of the day today looking at with a group of other local treasurers about the new state funding and how it's gonna impact our forecast. Um, as I mentioned before, the whole funding has changed. One of the big major changes that, that we are getting funded on students that we educate. It's not the district of where they live anymore, which we call the DOR. So that was a big change. And then there's a lot of other little pieces that add up to a lot that now calculates what we call our base funding. And what they're taking in consideration is how the teachers are um, allocated in each bucket. So that's more important now than ever that we code our teachers and we send the information to ODE that we have everybody in the correct bucket. The other thing is um, the busing. It's how many kids are riding the yellow bus. It's not that where there's so many kids in the seat and all that. So that's changed. Also, there's special ed um, busing that has changed. There's a lot of funding that's gone into what we call our base funding. And that's what we spent the day trying to, to learn all about that and how much percent of our funding is being based by local revenues versus state. And I was shocked to find that 70% of our funding is, is local, it's not state. So it was pretty intense and you'll see that impact on our forecast. What's gonna happen is you don't see, before prior we used to have open enrollment as part of our revenue. We've been running about 1.2 million a year. They have totally taken out open enrollment out of our revenue, but at the same token, 
On the expense side, we also have to, they deduct for what we call transfers out or scholarship is the um, autism grant and there's another grant, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but um, those are now not gonna be deducted out of our expenditures. So it's kind of a wash, but I think the last time I run the simulation, which I passed out a few board meetings ago, it, it looks like it's about 200,000 as of right now. We're supposed to get our actual numbers from um, state funding and we're hoping in October, which will get me more ready for the October, for the November forecast, which I'll probably present in October, because I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot now until I see that funding come through. So, any questions about that? Just to clarify, that's a $200,000 uh, reduction mm -hmm. in the funds we would receive. It, it, it can go either way, but it, it depends on how they hit our funding in October, and I'll see that. But there's only, you know, because last year, if you remember two years ago, they decreased our funding 443,000. Last year, they gave us 227,000 back. So this year, it'll probably be increased a little bit, 200, but I'm gonna say 200 either way, and I won't really know that until October. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Okay, I would like to block item A. Any questions about the financial statements for the month? I'll make a motion that we approve item A on the treasurer's report. I'll second. Roll please. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mrs. Miller. Yes. Mr. Evans. Yes. All right, do we have any announcements? Oh, I do. Um, so, First announcement is we are in dire need of substitutes across the district and just about every capacity of our service operation. So we're looking for substitute teachers for teachers, for aides, for food service workers, custodial workers, and transportation. So I know a lot of districts and a lot of businesses that are struggling to find help, um, and we are too. So if you know of anybody that would be interested, and working in a really good place, have it reach out to us. Um, along the lines of our strategic plan, uh, step up, student success, we congratulate, we had 10 uh, students from Taylor High School, who uh, student artists who were recently selected to exhibit their artwork at the Emerging Artist Show in Columbus, at the Columbus College of Art and Design, so we're excited for them. They'll be on display from October 7th through November 12th. Along the lines of uh, step up, talented teachers and staff, I want to congratulate Zana Faree, who was awarded the Outstanding Ohio Art Educator for the Southwest Region for the 21-22 school year. She'll have a, there'll be a regional ceremony that will take place in October College of Mount St. Joseph, so we appreciate her work and a much deserved honor. And then lastly, um, uh, not lastly, we have a young man who was recently accepted into the Navy, uh, Owen Ferguson, who is going to get into the program to be an aviation machinist, so congratulations to Owen. And then we have homecoming this Friday, so I would be remiss if I didn't mention parade at 530, followed by the homecoming game. So we welcome people back to Taylor High School. Look forward to that evening and weekend festivities. That's all. And the board and administration are going to be in the parade, so we'll see everybody there. Okay. After the it started. <laughs> The next is, are there any other announcements? No, not there. Uh, the next is hearing of the public. The Three Rivers Local School District welcomes discussion, comments, and ideas to grow the district. However, complaints about public school employees should be made through the procedure outlined in board policy and not in open session. Uh, do we have any comments for today? On here? Do you have your little uh, card? Do we have anybody else? All right, Jackie Hawkins. Yes, I'm Jackie 
Hawkins, and I live at 18 Timberline Court. It's more of kind of a two-part question that I just wanted to bring here tonight. The last time I was here, um, I kind of more pleaded my case, but now I just have a couple questions for you. Um, my first question is, I just wanted to ask the board, um, when you made the decision to not have the kids mask in school this year, um, I want to know how you came to that decision and what data you used to make that decision and who exactly made the decision. Well, we typically don't respond to public comments. You're free to, to say anything that you want to the board, but we typically don't respond. Um, we, I, I'm more than happy to get back to you and talk to you. Uh, I know that um, Dr. Hall can reach out to you and speak to you about the decision-making process. I probably, I think I'd probably like a response from the board members. You'd have to I talk to them individually because I, I think I would like that because I think that's where the decision came from. Um, so I would like probably a response from each of the board members. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. That would be wonderful. Okay. Thank you. And then my next question is, um, um, because at the last meeting that I did was able to attend and listening to all the discussions and I, the and the videos that I did view of the meetings after, um, it is definitely obvious that the board does not seem interested in any of the information coming out from the healthcare professionals, you know, from whether it's from the local professionals, the state, the national, that seems pretty obvious. So my question is for the board, and I, again, would like a response from the board, each of you, um, from also Ms. Adams and those who are not present. What is the plan? If it continues to get bad, do you have a plan to reevaluate your decision? And what will it take for you to rethink your decision? Is there a plan at all? You know, do you have a criteria? You know, if we if we meet you know this threshold, if we have this many kids, if we have this many kids having to quarantine, you know, what do you, is there, or is it is it all for nothing? You know, because um, I I'm, I was I'm still a little blown away. Not gonna lie, um, I'm just not sure. You know, because I'm highly concerned that we're about to go into a season where, and I, I brought a copy of you, so if you're not interested in, you know, the healthcare professionals and all the scientists, legit scientists, have you been paying attention to your own data? And from last school year when masks were required, I mean, if, you're, if it's not obvious, um, to you, take a look. And we're going into where the kids aren't going to be outside. They're all going to be stuck inside, indoor sports. And, you know, kids are, be effect are being affected more. And it's spreading quicker and faster. And, you know, I don't care. I, I, I don't like to go political because. To be honest, I don't give a crap who you voted for, what your political party, what you believe in. I don't care. My, my only responsibility is my child and the children around me. That's, that's all I care about. And, you know, if somebody can prove to me that um, this is all a hoax and masks really aren't, but you know what? They do work. Um, they really do. And I just want it to be taken seriously. And I, it, your own data from your information speaks for itself. So I just would like a response from the board members themselves from both parts of my questions and soon, if possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Thank you. All right. Any other uh, public comments? Old business? 
new business. Um, we do have a need of, for executive session. Um, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session for the discussion of a collectively bargain negotiations and for the employment of public personnel. I'll second. <clears throat> Roll, please. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Uh, we will uh, end, end the uh, meeting after our executive session. We won't have any other public business.